I don't like heights very much. I mean, heights? Yes, I, I would mm. rather not go right. to the top of the building and stand by the mm -hmm. edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or by the edge of a cliff or something. You have fear and vertigo at the same time, or no, only, I don't have vertigo. Only fear. It's just fear. I can sort of uh -huh. see myself falling over if I go right. near, or the children. Yeah. What about the dark? Do you like to be in the dark? Or? No, I don't. Not very you much. Don't. I sleep in the dark. Yes, yeah, but but um, if I wake up uh -huh. and it's dark, I'd rather I sort of switch on the light quickly. Yeah. What about thunderstorms? They don't bother me, as long as they're not too close. If they're overhead, I don't like them, but mm -hmm. if I can just hear them at a the distance, it's not fun. You afraid of fear of mice? No mice? No, I'm not no. afraid of mice. Afraid. Again, I don't like them if they're running around under my feet, but uh, I can, right, yeah. if somebody gives me one, I can pick one up, uh -huh. if it's a pet mouse. Do, uh, are you uh, afraid of, uh, say, cancer? I mean, do you yes. have do you have a fear now that? Oh yes, I have. I've always been afraid of cancer. Uh -huh. Since they told you about your mastopathy, or before that even? Well, I've had it so long, the the mastopathy that. Um, I think it's a general fear, fear of cancer. Fear of cancer. Yes. That overwhelms your. Uh, uh, your, uh, overwhelms you sometimes that fear that for instance you paralyzes you for some no it moments did, then you go over it did until i knew what i'd got you know when you find lumps in your breast you immediately immediately yeah. think you've got cancer so right. until you've been to the doctor and had it checked that's why i used to you know go to the doctor straight away um when he told me that it was all right i mean sort of your fears just go away right. But since I read this article, I've been a bit worried again. Do you put weight easily? Yes. Very easily? And easily. you lose it very, with great difficulty? Yes, yes. That's the case? Yes, I'm always trying not to, to eat. Not to eat. Do you like eggs? Yes. What form? Soft boiled? Uh, soft boiled, usually. Soft boiled? Soft boiled, yes. I don't, I'm not keen on hard boiled eggs. You're not keen? No. I like fried eggs, poached eggs. Mm -hmm. You have a good appetite in general. Yes. A good appetite. Very good, eh? Very good. You want it you want to reduce it? I oh. would like to reduce, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm always hungry. We try to bring about a, a balance in the whole individual. This is the aim in homeopathy, in good homeopathy at least. To bring about a balancing the whole of, it, of the individual. And this is not only a name, an aim, we aim, but also it's a fact. When the correct remedy is given, that feeling of well-being of the whole individual is there. The first thing that they will say, I feel so well in general, even, even if he's pain in the knee, is still somewhat there. Why do you ask all these strange questions, sir? You see, we are interested to know how your whole organism is working. Yes. When you have an anxiety, there is a defense that the body is putting, the best that he can have. When you're, you're feeling cold, this is his defenses. He says, don't let me uncover, cover me. This is his defenses. When he says, give me sweets, that means the level of sugar is low. Give me something which is sweet. When he says, give me soft boiled eggs, it means give me a little bit more calcium because soft boiled eggs are, are uh, full of calcium and yes. you take it easily. So all these are put together and finally we find out how your system works yes. and, and uh, why it has this kind of symptomatology that bothers you at the moment. You also say you put on weight very easily. There is a problem in metabolism. Yes. But if I have something else as well, I mean, not yes. that I have anything else now, right. will the remedy cure that as well? Uh, right. Whatever it can be cured, it will cure. Whatever is irreversible will not cure it. Oh, but whatever it can be cured, it will cure. And it will cure the whole organism. 
uh, the whole organism will come into balance again. Yes. You, you will desire less sweets, you will not be putting so much weight so easily. Oh, good. You know, yes. these kind of things will happen when, when the organism is balanced. It is a very difficult job that because we are trying to find the remedy that suits your temperament, your personality, your defenses, your defense mechanism. Yes. How you put up so easily the fear of cancer. Yes. It's not me that I'm doing it. Yes. Why it's you? Yes. George Bithulkas brought homeopathy to Greece 20 years ago. He's practiced and taught in Athens ever since. When George first set up his practice, he had to find a pharmacist willing to learn how to make up the 2,000 homeopathic remedies he uses. Pavlos Tsivanidis was the first pharmacist to work alongside George, and he's continued to make up and dispense the remedies from his three pharmacies. The remedies are either plant, mineral, or animal-based, although sometimes they can be a product of the disease itself. This herbal extract is diluted with water and alcohol and shaken until it becomes what the homeopaths call potentized. Remedies are made in varying strengths by this process, which has to be performed with absolute precision. The more the remedy is shaken or succussed and diluted, the greater its strength. Some are so dilute, there's not a single molecule of the original substance left. But homeopaths believe the energy remains despite the dilution, and that's what makes the remedy active. By adding lactose, it's turned into a powder before one last succussion. The remedy is then ready to store in one of Pavlos's specially made drawers, hidden from heat and direct sunlight, both of which are thought to destroy its therapeutic value. These remedies are aiming to achieve something totally different to those prescribed by a conventional doctor. Each remedy has been tested as an undiluted substance on healthy people, who as a result of Homeopathy believes that if the substance can produce these symptoms in a healthy person, it can cure them in an unhealthy person. Everybody says, <clears throat> look at the whole person, look at the whole person. But uh, finally, he takes a painkiller for his knee. Wh what about his anxieties, his depressions, his fears that he has on another level? Oh, uh, give him uh, a Valium. But Valium does not take care of the knee. The painkiller will not take care of, of the anxiety. A volume will not take care of the lower uh, uh, memory of the person. And uh, actually sometimes by taking a drug, uh, allopathic drug as we call it, a person may have what we all know as side effects, which means uh, some portion of this human uh, being is patched up and some other portion is suffering at the same time and because of the medicine. George was an engineer before studying homeopathy in South Africa and India. On his return to Athens, he founded the Athenian School of Homeopathic Medicine, a clinic with 27 practicing homeopaths, but George believes that this is the best way to learn homeopathy. He's the only homeopath in Greece who's not a doctor of medicine. When he returns here, even the trained homeopaths want to sit in and learn from his case-taking. Uh, the heart, the heart uh, does not flutter, you know, or does beat, not flutter. nothing like that nature. Uh, it's just a, a kind of a, a feeling here, a kind of a, I can't describe it really. It's kind of a dull feeling, kind of a dull, not aching, but kind of a hollow, dull feeling right here in the middle. I see, yeah. So, uh, that's the one problem. And a low back pain I've had for years. For years. I had to learn to live with it. Maybe it's occupation because I lean over my work. I lean over. Right, right, working right. in this position. Right. So I jog every day and I swim. I try to be fit. And yeah. So. 
I've tried all the disciplines. I'm vegetarian for 25 years. Oh, you're a vegetarian? Yeah, vegetarian, yeah. yeah so I've, nice. uh, and then the psoriasis I've had now on my, the back of my head now for a couple of years now. And I went to... Uh, a couple of years now? A couple of years now. I went to uh -huh. dermatologist in uh, Florida, United States, uh, yes. when I first uh, noticed this problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave me some uh, cortisone, yes. some cortisone-based yes. ointment yes. of some sort, and I put it on, and it gets better, and then... When I don't put it on, it comes back. So I quit using it. I don't, I don't like to use any cortisone, any medications. I, I don't like to take any medication, not even an aspirin. Right. In the back pain, mm -hmm. is it there when you sit for some time yes. in a chair, and then you try to get up? Yeah, then I feel it. Then you feel it. Yeah, right now I don't feel it, but uh, yeah. the office, at the end of the day, I, 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 I start feeling it. Uh -huh. And which is the worst position for, you, for your back? The worst position? Yes. I mean, when do I feel this pain? Yes. I guess when I'm leaning over. When you're leaning over. Looking at these kids all day long and I'm leaning over. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, with the anxiety and the stress in the office and the confusion, and they might uh, tend to uh, accentuate it. I don't know. Right. What is this that really you crave for? <sighs> particular food or foods in general, like fruits Food. or vegetables or what? Vegetables. Uh, well, I like, I like anything natural. Anything raw and natural, like it's yeah. like a raw salad right. or fresh fruits, right. and I like nuts. The Homeopath's Bible is the Materia Medica. I like cheese, it lists nuts. all the remedies and goes into great detail in its descriptions of the symptoms to which they apply. Sweets, do you think? I used to like sweets, but I've eliminated them from my diet. Mm -hmm. uh, not because I don't like them, but because I know they're bad for me. You know, and so consequently, I've learned to avoid them, and now I've lost my desire for sweets. Right. But I like sweet, uh, you know, like, like sweet fruit. Yes. Or, yeah. you know, raisins or dates or figs, something like that. But right. I have a little bit, and that's it. I, I don't crave them, you know. I don't uh, eat excessive amounts right. of fruit. Uh, well, do you understand uh, how our medicines act? I like to learn about it. Let us say a normal person will have a, uh, a kind of almost normal uh, diagram mm -hmm. like that. Yes. And is, is acting, uh, um, his body is, is, is in balance. Mm -hmm. And if stress is attacking mm -hmm. this organism, mm -hmm. then the organism, in order to counteract the attack, reduces symptoms. Mm -hmm. Symptoms are showing the defense of the body. Yes. So therefore, this kind of draft will change into uh, this type of, of draft mm -hmm. with bigger or smaller symptoms yes. in order to counteract the attack from whatever stress, whether it's virus, it's a stress, yes. it's a hereditary yes. uh, weakness that they try to mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. We're giving more force mm -hmm. to, the, uh, to the defenses mm -hmm. in order that finally, through that manifestation of symptomatology, the organism tries to regain its uh, lost balance. Yes. So we put together the whole individual, mental, emotional, and physical, yes. in order to see how the defenses are working more. Because an anxiety is a defense, yes. a fear yes. is yes. a defense. The remedies definitely operate on all these levels. They operate actually on an energy level, which is behind all those three levels which energizes, which vitalizes the body, which, uh, which makes, gives life to, to the body. We cannot pin down that energy yet. We cannot show it in an X-ray, but it's definitely there. If I speak, it's the energy which is in me that speaks. An hour away from Athens is the ancient healing site of Amphiorion. It was built over 2,000 years ago 
and people came here from all over Greece with their problems, believing that the gods would advise them during their sleep. From time to time, George likes to return here. It's a place where he finds it easier to think about his work and to replenish his energy. The great Greek physician Hippocrates believed that like could cure like. The idea was taken up by Samuel Hahnemann in 1790. He studied medicine at the University of Leipzig, but was disillusioned with bloodletting, leeches, and the use of toxic chemicals. Hahnemann came across a paper that concluded that the successful treatment of malaria with Peruvian bark was due to its bitterness. Unconvinced, he experimented on himself and experienced all the symptoms of the disease. Next, he collected the details of accidental poisonings, and he and other interested doctors began systematically testing substances on themselves. They recorded these observations for six years, and their work still forms the basis of modern homeopathy. Alonisos, a remote island in the Sporides. George has built a house here, and this is where he comes to work on the Materia Medica he's compiling. As a child, he never visited the country. In fact, the first time he left Athens was at the age of 20. But this is the place he wants to retire to. There's not a lot of time for George to go fishing or look after his small plot of land. For nine months of the year, he's abroad, teaching fellow homeopaths and seeing their most difficult cases. Homeopathy challenged orthodox medicine throughout the 19th century. It retreated in the face of the new scientific drugs, but as their limitations become apparent, homeopathy is gaining strength again. Today, it's the second most widely practiced system of medicine, and George's work takes him all over the world. A good, simple diet, sunshine, the sea, and a relatively uncomplicated, stress-free lifestyle all contribute, George feels, to Greek people being easier to treat than most Americans or North Europeans. Whenever he returns to Alonisus, the word gets out and the islanders flock to his door to have their cases taken. Παραλιέτη. Αν τίποτα έχει περάσει έτσι καμιά μεγάλη αρρώστια. Δεν έχω. Τίποτα. Γερή ήσου να σου μεσόλει στην ζωή. Γερή. Υδρώνει πολύ. Υδρώνω. Δεν λε τίποτα. Περισσότερο πού σε ποιο σημείο υδρώνει. Στι βασχάλε, στο πρόσωπο, στο κεφάλι. Από το κεφάλι μέχρι κάτω. Όλα, όλα. Από το κεφάλι μέχρι κάτω. Το πρωί που ξυπνά, είσαι πιασμένη. Δηλαδή τα πόδια στα χέρια σου, οι πιθανοθρώσει πονάνε. Ναι, 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 πονάνε. Και πότε περνάνε. Πότε περνάνε οι πόνοι, κάνεις μερικά βήματα, ναι, σε 5-10 λεφτά ή περνάει και μια ώρα. Όταν πυρπατήσω και κάνω λίγα βήματα, ε, λύνονται. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Στο κρεβάτι ναι. πονάς καθόλου στο κρεβάτι. Όχι. Όχι. Αμα... Όταν παναγυρίσεις στο κρεβάτι, να κάνεις κινήσεις στο κρεβάτι. Ναι, όταν α, που, και, αυτό πουλεί τα πουδάγια μου, πουνών και στο... Αχα. Ή έχεις και άλλο τίποτα. Δεν έχω άλλο. Αυτά είναι. Ο ύπνος σου είναι καλός. Ο ύπνος, άμα δεν πάρω χαπάκι δεν κοιμώμη. Α, πες καμπάκι. 
Όχι, πάει για να κοιμηθείς. Τι χάπια παίρνεις, ξέρεις πώς τα λένε. Τα μπόλ αυτά. Τα τα μπόλ. Τα βόρ. Τα μπόλ, ναι. Τα μπόλ, ναι, ναι, ναι. Τι έχεις έτσι, άγχος έχεις μέσα, σε πιάνει μια τρεμούλα της... Άμα δεν μπορώ να κοιμηθώ, βλέπεις και χτυπάει το στομάχι μου και παένει. Μη πιάνει... Στο στομάχι το νιώθεις, δηλαδή, αυτό σαν χτυπάει ή σαν να σφίγγει κιόλας στο στομάχι. Να χτυπάει, να χτυπάει. Ναι. Αυτό το στομάχι που, που χτυπάει σου, σου φέρνει, ας πούμε, και... Μηθαίνει στην αχώρια. Στην αχώρια, ε. Στην αχώρια. Σαν κάτι τι, σαν κάτι να... Σαν... Να, ένα, ένα πράγμα yeah. εδώ μέσα να μη σφίγγει, να μην ξέρω. Yeah. Πρώτα, πριν να πάω στο βόλο, σπώνω μια ουλίχτα πάνω και δεν έξερα τι να κάνω. Yeah. Αυτό το σπίτι του ουλίχτα να... Αυτό καμιά φορά είναι και σαν να μην μπορείς να πάρεις αναπνοή, σαν να κόβει την αναπνοή σου. Όχι. Όχι. Είναι μόνο χτύπημα στο στομάχι. Ναι, χτύπημα. Εντάξει, έτσι περιμένουμε. Έτσι, I have um, come to the conclusion, actually, that uh, the health of our race, especially of the Western people, is deteriorating rapidly. And the defenses of the bodies are going down in, with great speed. And as a result, we shall have uh, human beings with no defenses. And we see AIDS today. And we see a host of other new diseases appearing that they don't know where they come from. But uh, back in 15 years ago, when I was lecturing in Athens in uh, the medical groups, I was predicting that through uh, a lot of antibiotics, that, that uh, tremendous huge amounts of antibiotics that the uh, uh, human race is ingesting, and also uh, ho uh, hormones, and also vaccinations. The immune system gets weaker and weaker, and finally will be open to new virus, new diseases. That will be very virulent. So the antibiotics well. may need, you may need, because even with homeopathy, with uh, other alternative therapies, you may not come to the right conclusion and you have a case which really is a matter of a life of death. So you may give antibiotics, but immediately start with homeopathy. Rebuild his immune system. Twice a year, George holds a two-week seminar on Alonisos for his students from all over the world. They're all practicing homeopaths and most of them originally qualified in orthodox medicine. A lot of them have traveled from other European countries, but some have come from as far away as America and New Zealand. Here at the village school, George discusses his new findings on some of the remedies, takes students' cases, and presents some of his more problematic cases on video. And always, in every case, I'm trying to find out what was the causative factor. <coughs> Many times we'll see it is chemical drugs. And uh, other times we see that it is great stresses. Great stresses. The first time that you had your knee, it was about high school, 16 years old? 18 years old. 18 years, yes. The first time that you walked with the doctor, they could not confirm a practice. 19 years old, you had your hip. 20 years old, you have again a tightness both knee and it's confirmed it's a tightness. Yes. What, what you call this? What is this expression? Rigid. Huh? Rigid? Not rigid. For look. Huh? Staring. 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 You know, he looks, but it is there. It's with fear inside. And uh, the look and then the effort to, to think. Huh? I'm just reading 
from Berger's Materia Medica, uh, the description of the mind of, this, of that particular person who needs the remedy. He says, forgetful, thoughtless, staring, slow to comprehend. That's all. You see the effort, the effort to think, huh? as if there are no thought, no, make, make an effort. And then the staring, staring in, and then, and then there is something else inside, which I will show you in, 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 uh, in the video. It was only incident that created a great fear. We saw a robbery, or uh, we saw some men killed, or uh, you, uh, you saw your father, you know, attacking your mother, or, I mean, anything that created a great fear. I, s I have a, an incident that that I remember yeah. every once in a while, and it, and it still it still bothers me. Yeah. Um, do you want the Do you want to know about the incident? Yes. Um, I used to be a lifeguard, and um, a lifeguard. Yes, uh, at a at a lake. Uh, watching the water, yeah. and I was called over to an area to bring a first aid kit for someone who was injured, uh, who had cut their foot. And while I was there, and a woman came over and said that they had, her and her boyfriend had just tried to swim across the lake, and as she turned around, her boyfriend was gone. And. The other lifeguards and myself had to dive to find this person, and I was the one who found him. I was diving into the water and swimming, and it was sort of, sort of uh, murky water, and you couldn't see maybe this far in front of you. And I just sort of came on on this person, and he was looking up from the bottom of the lake. Uh, scary experience, and I, uh, even though I knew I had to bring him up, I it scared me so bad that I couldn't I couldn't physically bring him up. Yeah. Well, we are uh, uh, two hundred <laughs> was prescribed in this case, and. Uh, the first thing that changed, according to the information, the medical doctor who was attending him was a friend, actually, of his, of his, and of his family. And uh, he brought the information from his family as well, his own observation, uh, that the mental condition of this boy improved after uh, Guayacum very much to the extent that he was talking much more uh, easy now and faster, etc. And uh, his pains within a month, within a month and a half, had been reduced to half. The swelling also had been reduced quite significantly without still being able to walk freely. I expected that this case would need a repetition because of the severity of the case, because of the potency being very low, would need a repetition after a few months. Most probably there will be a relapse and you will need a higher potency. And perhaps a series of potencies on Guayacum before he could go to another remedy, most probably. This type of diseases uh, are not curable easily and in a short time. You will expect to effect a cure within two or three years in this case. But all this time improving, 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 but slowly. Now as the improvement, improvement will take place, there will be times where 
this psoriasis and the uh, arthritis will improve together. There will be times where the psoriasis will look more improving and the arthritis will look more aggravating. But on the whole, the pattern that will show in the end will be a diminution of the arthritis and an increase of the uh, psoriasis. To what extent his arthritis will be diminished? How much permanent structural changes have been affected by all these uh, uh, inflammations in the joint? We do not know. But this boy definitely, he will be able to walk again. name the symptoms of a disease after its remedy. So if silica is the remedy, the patient becomes a silica case. Blair has his case taken uh, by George and his fellow students. I'm uh, 30 years old and uh, been married uh, two years, no children at this time, and I um, have two main uh, uh, concerns physically. And the first the headaches. Um, uh, severe headaches, on, usually on the right side, and um, the um, headaches uh, at one point would respond to some homeopathic remedies um, <coughs> once or twice, like Brionia or Nux, and now the only thing they seem to respond to is osteopathic manipulation. Um, in in this point, in this point. Uh, uh, he started telling his story. He says right-sided headaches. He did not mention left-sided at all. Therefore, uh, when he says right-sided headache, which remedies shall we be searching? Russian uh, No, no, no. Belladonna. Sanguinaria is exceptionally right-sided. Belladonna. Belladonna, which is a right-sided remedy, lycopodium, again a liver remedy, chelidonium, chelidonium. Does he look like a muriat natural muriaticum case? No. 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 <laughs> Why? How you would describe him? Extroverted and cal calm, eh? calm. The other complaint. Yeah. yeah. Well, other th about the headaches. Although this isn't really just with the headaches, but in general, in the past two or three years, my head is real sensitive to wind, and like I can't ride in a car with a window rolled down. Is that it gives me? A, it'll give me a headache or just make me irritable. Another remedy that we have to be thinking if he tells that he gets headaches from wind, it is the 
famous remedy? Famous remedy? No, no, what happened to you? <laughs> no. No, no. It's a person, it's a person uh, that, uh, that will, will walk always with a heart, because otherwise we'll get a headache. Serenum. You see, this is the problem. You, you, expect, you expect to hear exactly the, exactly, uh, the words. I cannot get out without a heart, otherwise I'll get a headache. But this is what he is saying. He has to wear something in his head, otherwise the wind will bring only a day. Why do you have to hear exactly the phrase? We are dealing with uh, analogous situations. Uh, what uh, is uh, the remedy that will most fit his personality, silica or serinum? Silica. Silica can fit. Why silica? Now, there is, a, there is a sign in him that says silica more than strotorinum. Which is that sign? Which is the sign? <laughs> boldness. Look at this boldness. Boldness in man. You will see silica is one of the main remedies that produces boldness. Boldness. That's why when he gives a symptom characteristic of silica, being bold, he will, will, will tend to think of silica. Now, in order to be a silica patient, what does he have to have? Sweats, sweats, or sweaty feet, or sweats in different places, but mostly he has to have an aggravation from? <coughs> from cold, an aggravation from cold. Very good. Well, that's the other thing that causes headaches is that uh, I, my head cannot get cold. Homeopathy, actually, I feel, has been abused. The name has been abused. Because homeopathy is a when the physician the homeopathic practitioner tries to find that remedy that has produced the totality of symptomatology of the person. Now, in many instances, because the practitioner or the physician is lazy or not knowledgeable, instead of trying to find that remedy, which is the only one that is required, he will give 10, 20, 30, 40, remedies at a time, hoping that within this 40 is the one that's the correct one. We have uh, a knowledge of sulfur given mostly by, uh, by Kent, right? I feel that this picture, as it's presented in uh, the end of the 19th century of sulfur, is not uh, a representative of the picture of sulfur of today. I have discovered that we, we have basically two types of sulfur, both of them consuming a great amount of food and drink, all kinds of drinking, first, with a high metabolism, and the one is very lean, and the other one is quite plethoric and sometimes obese. Because of that tendency of sulfur to consume a lot of food, today we have uh, a lot of high cholesterol cases which they need sulfur. Also, again, because of the same reason, we have another disease, which is a contemporary disease, and which is diabetes. 
which will be amenable to sulfur. High blood pressure. Ulcerative colitis. Insomnia cases. Usually he does not take care of his appearance at all because he has some superior knowledge or a kind of better knowledge than others that gives him the possibility to stand by this knowledge and disregard social circumstances where he has to appear dressed properly, clean. Even when things are reaching an extreme where he feels his own odors from the body are bothering him, he will go and wash locally. <laughs> he does not have, he does not have the energy or the interest to just clean himself up. Which is uh, your problem? Really, I think I'm in beginning to get arthritis. It runs in my family. Yes. My mother, in fact, died about six months ago, and on the death certificate, they gave arthritis as one of the causes because of the amount of medicines that she'd had to have. Yeah. Um, it's not bad, but I'm very conscious in my feet. They're very tender at the bottom of them some days, and I the understand souls, the soles of the soles feet. The soles are very yeah. tender, yes. Yes. Um, I wondered if it is possible to do something about this, to prevent it getting to the terrible stages that it, I mean, I've seen it, it, it can be just horrendous. Right. You feel that tenderness mostly in the morning when you wake up and you first step in? Yes, I find I don't like walking on marble now. I nearly always put shoes on when I get up, which I never used to do. I used to just sort of paddle around quite happily without bothering. Yes, I think the morning possibly, in the but morning. It, it, mm -hmm. I'm not stiff at all. I don't, right. mm -hmm. you know, I'm still very supple. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, I don't sleep well. You don't sleep well. But I don't think that's terrible. It's uh -huh. not something that is absolutely ghastly. I am slightly worried about the arthritis because right. one knows what because can happen. Because of the family history. Yes. Mostly. Yes. And do you? Uh, uh, when you, when you wake up, are you feeling tired? Uh, no, not then. I mean, sometimes I get up and paddle around the house and right. do things, but right. it's okay, I can do that. But sometimes I just sit in bed and read. But that is also something that mm -hmm. is in the family. My mother does the same thing there. This is why. Will you um, have cold feet or very warm feet? or? Well, now again i noticed i put a blanket at the bottom of the bed because i think it's the arthritis you need more warm in more warmth in, in my feet for in, my in feet. Your feet yes uh, yes I see. Right. um can you uh, describe a little bit your character what type of the person um, you are i think i'm fairly nervous I've got a degree in physics, so I mean, I'm, I'm presumably fairly... But uh, I worry quite a lot, I think. But it, it's difficult. Um, I'm a fairly conventional person. I have three children, a, a husband, you know. I, I'm a fairly normal sort of but, uh, person. Are you easily irritated, angry? Um... Well, I think I am, but people, other people tell me I keep very calm. Mm -hmm. So, right. Are you weeping easily? No. Even if you see a, a picture in the cinema, you won't weep? Sometimes, but Sometimes. not a lot, no. I, I... But you're not a weepy person. It's not, no. not a person I think I was as a child, but I, I, I must say that I did try to stop myself. Mm -hmm. But not now, no. Are you a person that will, uh, will keep uh, uh, things in order or oh, you are No, I'm chaotic. Mad, uh, uh, I'm chaotic, I think. Chaotic. Yes. Yes. 
What about uh, your uh, appetite? Is good? Yes, I eat a lot. You eat a lot. Uh, do you have the need to eat something uh, special, for instance, uh, meat or fish or uh, I don't or like sweets? sweets. You I don't eat sweet things you very, very you little. Mm. You, you I do eat not a lot like. of No, I do not like sweet things. Uh, in your family, was, uh, except of arthritis, was any other problem, any other uh, disease, like tuberculosis? Or? There is di um, diabetes in my family as well. Diabetes. Yeah. The sweets, you never, you never wanted sweets, or you decided that it's not good for health, and so you rejected it? Well, I don't think it's good, particularly with a history of diabetes, and right. I was told to avoid it. So you were told at what age? Oh. Quite, as a quite a young woman. You don't remember if you had a, a sweet tooth as a, a sweet child. Tooth as a um, no, I can't tell you. I'm sorry. Right. So okay, <laughs> that's uh, that's okay. Um, I think your case is rather simple, and yes. I hope to be able to help you. And. Uh, uh, the remedy will give you a remedy, which is called sulfur. I keep on having this ideal that the world someday will understand what homeopathy can offer to the human race, and they will take it up, and homeopathy will take its place. I still have this hope. <laughs> and uh, I believe not perhaps within my time, but my students will take it up further and will spread it. And one day, I don't know, it takes 50 years from now, homeopathy will be the prevalent uh, therapeutic system with an assistance from, you know, different other disciplines and allopathic medicine as well. Five months after filming, Leslie's feet are no longer tender and she can walk barefoot again. John's heart problem and lower back pain have virtually disappeared, but he still has psoriasis. George told him that would be the last symptom to go. But the only fear I have is, uh, right. is having breast cancer. Mary's breast cysts are smaller and less painful. She feels calmer and less anxious about her health and she no longer suffers ovulation pain. Ναι, πρέπει να αλλάξουμε μέρος τώρα, κανονικά. Κανονικά πρέπει να αλλάξουμε μέρος. Βάλε μπρος, Πέτρο. 